Thank you. I think I'll come back to this title with the gentleman there next to number four. Yep, please. Uh, okay. My name is uh, Irene, so I've been a um, shareholder, individual shareholder for over 10 years. Uh, I wanted to know, uh, do you know what China needs all this iron ore, copper and steel for? Uh, is it for the construction of residential buildings in particular? Because of course they have this 9% growth a year, but it's 50% of that 9% of growth. Is it for construction of residential buildings mainly funded by local governments trying to meet targets by borrowing from the banks, ICBC Bank, in order to make these residential buildings that are bought by speculators that ordinary Chinese people cannot even afford to buy? Uh, it's, so uh, is, is this what, is this, I know that they are making, I heard on Bloomberg that they were making um, uh, railways, but mainly it's China is constructing residential buildings more than anything else. Uh, that's, and that's what I'm worried about, that that's what they're needing, all this iron ore and steel and um, aluminium for. I'm going to give you the best answer I can if Tom wants to add his welcome, of course. Uh, look, I think, uh, first of all, uh, uh, it's clear to us that in China's phenomenal growth pattern, they continue to invest quite aggressively in essentially infrastructure. Uh, by that I mean road systems, rail systems, uh, production capacity, uh, industrial capacity and industrial buildings. Uh, I doubt very much whether much of the steel we produce as steel actually is used in the residential sector, but of course in terms of apartment blocks and so on, no doubt that will take some steel as well. Uh, one thing I actually have always said about our business, which makes me feel very good, is that I know that what we, what we give to the world, the world needs in order to grow, and in particular in the case of China, the things we provide to China, they use not just to grow the economy, but indeed indirectly to create employment and to spread wealth throughout the whole country. Tom, is there anything you want to add in brief yeah, about residential? Thank you. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very important question, and as we begin to model not only what current steel demand will be, but what will be in the years in the future, we have to think about what, what, where, that, where that iron, where ultimately that steel will go. During the course of 2009, the stimulus monies, um, there, were, there were probably three directions that the money would have led to steel demand. Uh, the, fir the first would have been um, the infrastructure that Yan would have mentioned, you know, quite a bit on railways, quite a bit in terms of roads, bridges, con uh, construction of pylons for electricity generation, et cetera. But there was also a lot that was associated with previously flagged programs associated with the reconstruction of the Sichuan province following that terrible earthquake. Quite a bit of steel required just to basically, it's still un underway to rebuild the Sichuan province because so much of the total housing stock at all levels had been uh, ruined during that earthquake. Um, looking ahead, uh, we, we, we did see a loosening of, of, um, of loans, uh, quite, a, quite a big loosening of loans, and a lot of speculative spending. And you're right, a lot of that speculative spending went into high-end residence construction, and that is, frankly, overbuilt in many parts of China. But as we look ahead, uh, and, we, and we talk to policymakers and economists, the real demand going forward will be on the uh, emerging middle class and the low-end residential construction. Um, it will basically be moving from uh, a low-rise, uh, you know, houses that were built during, the, you know, a very, very different time in China where things were very poor to ones where people are going to be seeking more of a middle class I, I do think that as cities develop and the urbanization picture picks up, you're going to see very large high-rise clusters in China that are going to literally contain hundreds of millions of people. There are 400 million people that need to be urbanized in China, and they will be in high-rise cities. Uh, and I think even as you begin to price carbon and you have scarcity in energy, all you're doing is you're basically saying you need to have a more efficient urban model, which won't be a London-type low-rise, but it'll be high-rise buildings high-rise construction, and it will be steel-intensive. Thank 